Kellen and Sakura's story has a major problem that is unrelated to the fact that the story has a subtle gay vibe to it. It deals with how their story is disconnected from the bigger picture, with most of it having a questionable continuity. I'm here to tell you today why that is indeed a big problem. I will also attempt to come up with a conclusion so you don't leave this video with even more confusion than you started with, like how I was when I first started to research this topic. Hello people, in our first few hours of Honkai Impact Third, we are introduced to an entry in the game's open world mode, Sakura Samsara. As a refresher, it's about the story of Kiana's journey into the stigma space, whose stigma is implied to be Teresa's. This stigma space is where we, the players, would witness the history of Kellen and Sakura through a ReZero-esque story where the protagonist, Kiana, attempts to change the course of what happened, which would become what we call the first, second, and third Samsara. That's also a fourth one, but we'll get to that. So there are things that need to be explained, like what stigma was the story talking about, or why Kiana went into the stigma space in the first place, because the entire premise of changing history doesn't come up until you finish the first Samsara. So what was her goal before then? The answer lies in the manga. It was a while after Teresa took in the trio from Nagasora after previously subduing the third Hersher. If you want to know more about the prelude to what happened in Nagasora, there's this fan-made non-profit project that aims to cover this period which I have the chance to work on. Shameless promotion, maybe? But the alternative is a four-page summary buried in one of the mangas. So if you're interested, the link can be found in the description. It's a monthly manga release with light novels in between. You can also check out this video that I made about this project right here. Anyways, back to Teresa. She was notified of a new pseudo Hosha that appeared in Nagasora, which she set out to 1v1. She lost and nearly died, but was saved by Yei Sakura who exists as a spiritual being thingy. Due to the circumstances, Yei Sakura heals her by transferring her own Hershiko, which results in Teresa getting a stigma. Yei Sakura disappears in the process. Now that we know how Teresa got her stigma, we can just play through Sakura Samsara with no problems, right? If only it was that simple. Because if you look around a bit, you would find the gratitude arc that has literally the same premise with the story in-game. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Because of this mess, there has been discussion on whether any of the story actually happened. With the open worlds being dismissed as alternative reality with the likes of Sakura Samsara and the Shikso open world. A PSO used to be lumped into this category, but I think today we can all agree that isn't the case anymore. Anyways, to decide whether a piece of official media is canonical, we need to look for a reference that connects to the other parts of the story. In gratitude, Teresa was stuck in the stigma world because the big bad Hershey in the stigma wants to take over her body or something, so Mei is sent in to make sure Teresa is safe. Right off the bat, our characters are given a clear goal unlike in Sakura Samsara, where Kiana is just suddenly wandering around. More clues can be found in various other places like in this Divine Key manga chapter that refers to the character taking part in this story being both young and not so young, which cannot be used to describe Kiana and Bronya in the Sakura Samsaras because Teresa that took part in Gratitude is not young. I I'm sorry Teresa, it must be said. Here's a line under the in-game archives that refers to the ending of Gratitude. So with all the connections that we can find about Gratitude both in-game and externally, I think it's safe for us to put Gratitude higher than Sakura Samsara, but with a caveat. You see, the ending of Gratitude showed us that a divine key was created, the Jiso Mitama. And this sword is another pain in my behind to explain because this sword may or may not exist. Before you start typing which is the case, if you're enjoying this video, please leave a like so this video can reach more people. Thank you. Now to lay down the facts, the sword was created at the end of Gratitude, but that was in the stigma space, which is to say that it practically doesn't exist because we would never see anyone actually holding it in the real world. But remember the other Samsara I left behind at the start? The fourth one? The fourth Samsara was actually independent from the rest of the Samsaras because it's exclusively about Sakura's adventure in the stigma space, not about Kiana trying to change history like in the other three. If we dismiss the entire Sakura Samsara as not being canon because of the points I made, then we would acknowledge that Jisoo Mitama was made in the stigma space and would leave it at that. But if we consider the fourth Samsara separate from the rest, we would be able to come up with a case that Jiso Mitama does exist because gratitude could be used as a prelude to the fourth Samsara and the story in it does not contradict or overlap with the established canon. 
The sword only appears in the fourth samsara, which was never explained. So by using gratitude, we are able to make sense of the circumstances in the fourth samsara. In the ending, it is said that the sword was thrown back into the real world, but just like in many other occasions, it was never brought up again. So yes, it's a big problem when a piece of content put out by the official MiHoYo team, HoYoVerse team, contradicts or overlaps another content put out by the same team because that would give everyday players like us a harder time to fully understand the story. But is this a problem that the dev team needs to take care of right away? I don't believe so. Because any conclusion that this story gets will have a negligible impact at best because this all happened in an isolated space that isn't connected to the larger storyline of the game. Though I still think it's not ideal to force new players to play a piece of content that is ultimately unimportant and possibly not even canon in their first few hours of the game. I bet the devs gonna come back and sort this out once they decide to make Teresa a Hersha because the stigma or core she has would directly be related to it. In which case, this mess in the law would need to be dealt with. But what about you? Do you have any other explanations that you come up with in this situation? Or anything that you want to add on top of what I said in this video? As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.